Welcome to Tools on Tech, and this week I want to talk about LogSeq block references. Now, what are block references? They're basically like page references in LogSeq, but they point to a specific block of text inside your notes. And that's super useful for LogSeq, where a lot of your notes end up in your daily journal, and you want to reference them or put them somewhere else, but you don't want to copy all that data because when you copy all that data they might start running out of sync and you're doing a lot of duplicate work so to avoid that this skill is something you really need to know so let's get straight into usage now if you've ever been in logseq you probably already know page references that's like the bread and butter of any of this setup thinking and that uses the square brackets to find them and then if you go to a block reference that one looks a bit weird because you get all these weird numbers and they use regular brackets and that's because with a block reference it's not so for referring to like a specific page but it's referring to a specific block and to know which block that is logseq generates a unique id that it puts next to that block and that's where you link towards if you're talking usage then it's the same as for regular pages except you use normal brackets and then you search for something the main issue that you'll start hitting here quickly is that you make a lot more lines than pages. So searching this way isn't the most efficient way of getting towards your point. Uh, one of the main ways is just copy and paste and LogSeq is very much attuned to this. So if I go to this example page where my mate earlier is, if I copy, so I press Ctrl C, you see block ref copied in the corner. So it's not copying the text. You can copy text by selecting text and then pressing copy. But if you don't select text and you press copy, you get that block reference. And then you can go anywhere where you need it and just paste it. And then you see the weird number, but as soon as you click enter, it comes back as a link. Now you can also use this same information to give it a different name. So if you make it a link and you put like this reference in here and say like, you know, totally different, you see the same set and it's still the same link. It just links to the same block. Cool, you might be saying, but I saw that you had like a cake under it and I'm not seeing the cake in that example page that you're showing. And that's the difference between a block reference, which just makes a link towards a certain block and a block embed, which will show you the whole block and all the sub blocks that are under it. So let's do that one. And for that, I usually use the control E or you can use the embed. We'll show you both. So first of all, let's say we want to search. I do slash, I search for embed, I find block embed, and then I get a search block. So I say made earlier, uh, sorry, typing wrong, made earlier. I see my page, I see the unique ID, I click on that and then voila, my cake is done. That's one way to do it. And then the other one is by copying it. So I'm gonna remove this one. And because it's just a reference, nothing really gets removed. I can go to the example page, go to the block that I made, made earlier. Instead of Control V, I'm gonna press Control E. And then it says a block embed copied. So let's go back here, do a paste and exactly what we expected, a complete block references. That is the basic uses of block IDs and being able to copy and paste them somewhere is the first step in getting real good use from it. But let's dive a little deeper. Now, say you wanna remove one of these references. That's super easy because it's just a piece of text that links to something else. So if you remove it, you're never removing the original source, but it can happen by mistake one of the things that can happen is if you click here and you make changes you're not changing this specific page you're changing the original source and that's what sometimes happens. people remove everything here editing the source and then if they later look in their own page they go like hey where did it go and you see my change comes back here so this is the one thing you need to pay close attention to if you want to remove something like this make sure you're out of it and you see the embed set there you can say control a and remove now the same thing here you can make like a lot of changes inside a page it's easier or like harder for uh, references but just make sure that you have like the whole line selected before you remove it with something like backspace and then you don't have to worry if i go to the example page my original stuff is still there just pay a little bit of attention it's mostly with the embeds where things go wrong realize if you're changing the original 
or if you're you know removing just the reference towards the original this is also one of the strong suits of these block references but we'll get to that now let me show you how you can see the referrals you have towards your blocks if you look at something like a page it usually has like a linked reference on the bottom so this one says like hey february 21st link towards this page if i go to this example one you have the same thing where it says like hey this previous page has linked and this is one of the core elements of a linked thinking environment like Logseek. now the same thing works for block references you see the block reference here that made earlier changes and if i click on that you have this little button on the top here, this, this free, and that means that there's free references. Now I just quickly closed it, but I'll don't try to put a sneaky on you and move back to it. When you click on it, you see all the references. There's a little difference with pages. Pages put them all the way on the bottom, blocked references put them on the top because they're related to the block and not all the sub elements that are under it. And one of the reasons this always shows up for me is that very often I do a block reference inside a journal. And as you can see in the example I built here, I see January 2nd, I talked about this and February 3rd, I talked about this. And with this one, I was using interstitial journaling. So we go to that page. All I did is just add the text to front and then added the link after. It's one of the main benefits you have when you're doing these blocks. They don't necessarily have to be the first thing on the page or take up the whole line. And then with this information, I can, you know, go back in time and find related things just as I could do with pages. Great. So you have block references, but what do you use them for in real life? I mean, you already had page references. Let's get dive into a couple of real world examples. Now, the first real world example that I can give let me uh, show you is for example a table of contents so this is my script and then i have like this table of contents that points towards the individual scene blocks this is basic and works very well if i need a quick table of contents or a way to skim through larger documents and then another real world use case that i have is i use it to collect my notes together so again let's go to the same script here and you can see on the notes that there's a lot of block embeds here that show me the things that i've collected throughout the time and then i put those together to get into like a coherent story this is one of the ways how i combine stuff and another thing is because I'm constantly referring to the journal blocks, I get a couple of free bonuses. Because I refer to my journal, I know when I made the note, I know the context around it, so what kind of research was I doing on that day. And if I make any updates or changes to it inside the embedded block, that means that the source is changed and that also means that any other place where I reference this now has an updated version of that referred block. And this is something where I'm currently working on, which I call like just in time note taking, where I don't modify notes. I just make like a summary and then I work on those notes as I need them. I'll dive into that one in a later video. Watch out for that. Be sure to hang around. Speaking of research, one of the things that I use it a lot for is what I call my slip notes method. I'll put a card on the top because I already made like a whole video about it. But the gist is that I take the notes that I put in my journal and then make block embeds in a certain order in one of the pages when I dive deep on a topic or try to figure out how things fit together. A good real world example, and this is one that I use a lot at my current project, is that I do it for task tracking and then mostly those tasks that become mini projects. And what do I mean with that is you make a small to-do inside Logseek. So for example, I put here a mini project I named. Normally I don't know it's a mini project, but bear with me. So I name it something, I label it A because it's important, I need to get this done, and I might put like a subtask under it. And then as I'm working on it inside my log, I put a time and I do a block reference towards that project. And the benefit for that is that all the work that I'm doing on that specific task that usually gets broken up over a couple of days, I can just click on this, get towards it, see all the subtasks that are related to it or any other information that needs to be central, but this, the block reference, shows me all the times that I've been working on it. And then I can just go back in the logbook. So like, oh yeah, I worked on this on February 4th, 13, 23rd. Finally got hold of X, I'm gonna be working on it. This is a super simple way to turn small tasks that are growing into something that's still all related. So group all your notes together. And I love using it because 
if it does turn into a big project, I immediately have like a starting point. I can go back, see all the lock entries I made and then get a head start. And I've even used it today to explain the work I did on a specific work item towards a colleague, but just opening and going through the history and saying like, oh yeah, I picked this, 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 and this, and handed it over. One of the main use cases I currently have when I use Logseek to manage my tasks. So I add Twitter on these small topics where I wanna make like short videos that talk about a specific thing in Logseek that are easy to find, quick to follow, and you can keep going with your day. If you like it, let me know in the comments, give me any suggestions, topics that I should take on, and remember, you're awesome, keep it up.